In the workshop, a Stuart 504 boiler renovation, part one. I recently bought a Stuart 504 boiler via the auction site that we all know and love. And I studied the pictures carefully and saw the condition was quite reasonable for its age, although it's not been very well looked after and it's been in a damp place. But in the end, I placed a high enough bid to win the boiler and here it is on my small turntable. And as you can see, it's quite rusty and in a bit of a state but it will make a good short series as I bring it back to life and renovate it fully. As far as I'm aware, Stuart Models used to do three boilers in the 500 range, a 500, a 501, and this of course is a 504, the biggest of the three. The boiler itself is quite loosely fixed to a cast iron mounting. Here's a shot of the cast iron mounting, and here's a shot of the other end, with the fake doors and damper. I really do like these type of boilers, I've had quite a few over the years. This is a particularly good one because it is unsteamed. 504 boilers and possibly the other two 500s and 501s were originally supplied as a self-assembly kit. Just a load of parts in a box. I know this for a fact because I once bought a box of bits and this particular box was unopened. And when I looked inside, that's literally what it was. All the component parts of a 504 boiler. It's time to dismantle the boiler. This is the pressure gauge and siphon. This is the clack valve. And as you can see, all of these components are all like new. They've never had any water anywhere near them. This is the lower water gauge fitting. And all of these fittings are just loose in the holes. And as you can see very clearly, no evidence of any lime scale, water, corrosion or anything. Just a bit of tarnish on the metal. For now, I'm just putting these parts into a green plastic box as usual and I will clean them all up using my polishing spindle and then finish the job off with some brasso and a cloth. Stuart models have always had a very odd arrangement for taps and I suppose it's quite clever. This is a stainless steel insert. What you've got to be careful of though is you don't screw it too far into the boiler bush but then again it's not very tight so it comes out. Here I'm removing the safety valve and I didn't have to use a spanner on any of these fittings. I'm going to discard the aluminium washers and fit copper washers when I reassemble the boiler. The chimney is just a push fit into the casting, that's very easy to remove. And now it's time to take the thing apart. The construction of a 504 boiler is quite clever really, it's very very simple. Two side plates bolted to the castings with four 4BA four bolts. At this stage I feel that I have to issue a major health and safety warning, this is a sensible one. These type of boilers were manufactured in a different age in an age before we knew how dangerous asbestos could be. So behind each of these side plates was a sheet of asbestos board. When I first received the 504 boiler, I even opened the box outside and I removed the asbestos board. So this is the second time I've taken these side plates off. First to remove the asbestos and dispose of it by the approved method and the second one for the video. And while the boiler was outside, I cleaned off every trace of asbestos that I found on the castings or the side plates. So back in the workshop, the boiler components are all 100% safe to handle. All traces of asbestos has been removed. Having a look at the physical condition of the boiler, it really is quite good for its age. Like the steam fittings, it's very tarnished, but this will polish up beautifully on the polishing spindle. What I'm doing at the moment is using some Scotch-Brite to just clean off some of the corrosion. This was the worst of the marks on the boiler barrel, so just attacking it with some Scotch-Brite will make it easier to remove completely when I clean it up on the polishing spindle. I'm very pleased with this boiler. It was exactly as described by the seller, and it arrived with me very quickly after I bought it, and it was very well packed. As I said earlier, these were self-assembly kits and what you were supposed to do was clean up the castings. But very rarely have I ever seen a casting on a 504 or 501 or 500 boiler where anybody's really bothered to clean it up. But I'm going to clean up the castings and paint them and make the whole thing look very nice indeed. I didn't video the cleaning up part of the boiler on the polishing spindle because it's too difficult to get the camera in there. And also if I'm watching the camera, it can become quite dangerous. The cloth wheel spins at about 3000 RPM and this is quite a big lump of metal and I really did need to see what I was doing. All is not lost though because I'm showing the second part of the cleanup operation using a combination of Scotch-Brite and Brasso before I put it back on the polishing spindle and finish it off once again with Brasso after a final polish. 
This is just common elbow grease. It takes quite a while to get a good finish on the copper. And to be perfectly honest, the copper in these 504 boilers is not the best I've ever seen. It has little black specks in it, so I don't think it's a very pure copper, but I don't know enough to comment really. Eventually though, it's starting to shine and look good. So what about the construction of this boiler? It's very robustly silver soldered together, very well made, and contains several tubes which hang under the main boiler barrel. And as it currently says on the screen, this is a Babcock type of boiler. One really neat feature of the 500 series of boilers is the fact that the centre tube is not a water tube. It is a superheater. All the others are water tubes. And the purpose of having these external water tubes on what is basically a pot type boiler is just to increase the surface area for heating. The construction of the superheater tube is different. First of all it takes steam from the top of the boiler and feeds it along back into the boiler but not into the main part of the boiler it goes straight up to the top bush where the tap is attached so basically the wet steam is passed through the fire before it comes out of the tap a simple and clever design and very effective you get really hot steam from a 504 boiler moving on now to the boiler mounting castings they both need a bit of a clean up and on one of them there's a definite blowhole as you can see here so I'm cleaning around that with the drum sander in my minicraft drill and while I'm at it, I'm cleaning these parts as well, just getting rid of the sharp edges. The other casting which supports the chimney is particularly bad, and the small drum sander is really struggling to clean this part. I need to take more drastic measures. In this clip, I'm using a needle file on the chimney mounting part of the casting. Then I took the casting over to the belt sander and ground it as flat as I could. And what I'm doing at the moment is using the small drum sander to get down into the depressions because I'm going to fill these using some JB Weld. This part of the job took quite a while and became fairly tedious. And talking about tedious, I got a comment from a viewer. Now get this one. The viewer said that he wasn't happy that I didn't have the volume of the background noise high enough and that he needed to turn his volume up so that he could hear the background noise clearly, like for instance when the machines are running, and that my voice was too loud. I didn't mind this because I do like to keep the background noise at a minimum and it has a point. When I watch similar machine shop videos, I find it really annoying when the background is too loud. So on my videos, I purposely turn it down. But then he went on to say that I was too close to the mic and I was getting the proximity effect and he suddenly became an audio expert. Having been a professional sound engineer for about 45 years, all I can say is, when I voice over these videos, I'm over a foot away from the microphone when I'm speaking. The microphone that I use is a large capsule condenser microphone, which is a very expensive one and very good quality. But I will try harder next time. What I'm doing in this clip is marking the position for a hole that I need to drill underneath this casting. I'm going to drill and tap this hole 3 8 by 32 threads per inch to take a steam union so that the exhaust steam from the engine, after it's gone through a condenser to remove the oil, can be directed up the chimney. And as a special treat for the viewer who made the comment, listen to this. First of all, in the normal fashion, I'm using a centre drill to drill a pilot hole. And then I follow this by using a tapping size drill for 3 8 by 32 threads per inch and the tapping size and I'll say this twice, the tapping size is generally two imperial sizes down from the 3 8 of an inch diameter that you need to end up with once it's threaded. As you can hear clearly, this is making quite a horrible noise, and that's really why I turned down the volume. I don't see that it's necessary to have these horrible mechanical noises going all the time in the background. I will often turn up the soundtrack of a steam engine running, and even stop talking. But for general machine tool noise, I need to keep it at a sensible level. This is a very quiet process. I'm threading the hole using a 3 8 by 32 threads per inch tap. Here is a 3 8 by 32 threads per inch steam fitting, screwed in position underneath the chimney. This stuff is really good. It's called JB Weld. It's a two-part epoxy resin that contains steel and takes 24 hours to cure. I've used it before on several applications and every one of them has been successful so it's certainly going to be okay for filling the unevenness of the casting on the front of a 504 boiler. I already have a pack of this opened so I'll use this instead of opening a new pack. It's very easy to use, I just squeeze out equal amounts of both parts of the mixture onto a piece of wood 
and mix it thoroughly until it becomes a uniform grey colour. And then all I have to do is apply the mixture to the castings where I need them to be filled. And then I just wait 24 hours for the mixture to cure, then I can start sanding it all smooth. So I can't do anything at this for the next 24 hours. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.